Hello. So it's actually quite interesting. Uh, I seem to have gained a bit of a following with regards to my ACDF surgery. So if you are new, welcome. My name is Kim. I am almost at eight months um, post ACDF surgery. I had C4 to C7 done. Um, it feels like it's been a while since I made one of these videos and I just got done work. So I just wanted to make an impromptu one because a couple of people were asking. So thank you to everyone who's been following. Um, you're not on like a tripod or anything because I just didn't have time to, but I figured what the hell, let me just make a video and it'll like be Blair Witchy for a little bit, but welcome to my bedroom. Usually I do it in my living room, but oh my gosh. All right. So ACDF surgery. So surgery, uh, scar. So again, I am almost eight months post-surgery. It's been a journey. Uh, it's truly been a journey and not necessarily a great one. But the reason I started this whole video documentary thing, whatever you want to call it, um, quite amateur documentary, was because I'm 38 years old. I'm from Philly. So if you're here, flyers suck right now, but whatever, still go flyers. Um, but I was searching for a lot of... I was searching basically for videos or for information from people who had had my surgery done successfully and didn't regret it. Um, I'm like out of breath. <sighs> I think I'm quite nervous. I don't know why. I'm just like talking to myself, but I don't know. Knowing that you guys are watching it, it kind of, I think, makes me a little bit nervous too. But anyway, so my journey, uh, I'm going to kind of summarize it. If you want, go back to all the other videos that kind of shows like pre-surgery and then like day of or day after surgery, I was quite doped up for a while. But um, in the beginning, it was interesting. It actually went really, really well. Again, I had three levels done. Sounds like four, but it's three levels. It's um, C4 to C7. And the journey was interesting because I started out, I guess, like uh, two years ago with working out a lot and seeing a chiropractor, got adjusted the last time and kind of went like paralyzed on the left side um excuse me um ended up in the er and they realized i have congenital stenosis fun stuff i actually have it in multiple parts of my spine so it's gonna be an interesting journey <sighs> all right so where do we go um so anyway, I put off the surgery because I was on steroids and things got better and um, I got functioning and everything back in my my left side. So I was kind of like, I can skip this really scary surgery. So anyway, I ended up going through Rolfman Orthopedics with Dr. Victor Shu. Highly recommend him. And um, yeah, so my surgery was August 29th and it was really successful and I felt great after the surgery. I... I felt great. Um, I, I'm an anxious person. I have a lot of medical anxiety and I've just always been the weird one that has something. I'm always the, that 1% of people who, I don't know, get mishaps. So that's why when I was like searching for videos or I don't know, just information from like normal people that have had the surgery, I was just coming up empty. Everybody had like woes or, um, don't do it. And I obviously couldn't find anybody my age, 38, who had it done. And I couldn't find any longitudinal um, videos of like, down the road, how did they make out? So I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pioneer this. I don't know. But whatever. Anyway, um, had the surgery. And after some anxieties and some slips and vacuuming, you're not allowed to vacuum for quite some time. And I love vacuuming. It's like my coping skill. I'm a weirdo, but whatever. <laughs> um... So I was doing some stuff that I probably shouldn't have done and freaked myself out, had some tweaks, I guess, but most of it ended up being just nerve, or I'm sorry, most of it was just muscular. So um, it was just weird. It was muscular and I was freaking out. Um, I live alone. I probably shouldn't say that online, but anyway, whatever. Um, but I had help with friends and everything, but I was like independent where I was like, I want to just get back to normal and do my own thing. Anyway, went fine and was able to drive, get back to normal. Life was good. And then if you saw my one video, um, I think it was December. 
yeah, I think it was December. It was like, I think month three or four. And I went on a really easy hike at Hulk Mountain. If you're familiar, it's in Kempton, PA, beautiful place. Um, Hulk Mountain Sanctuary, totally recommend um, supporting them if you can. But um, yeah, I think it was December 13th or December 14th. I went on a really simple hike. I was out of breath, kind of like now <laughs> for some stupid reason. Um, and felt fine. And then the next day I picked up a box, a chewy box that was full of like, I don't know, cat litter or like bird seed. I don't know. And I felt fine. I just had a weird stretch, e emailed or text my doctor. And he said I was probably fine. But we ended up finding out that I guess the disc below, I think it's C8 T1 that ruptured or something. So, um, Anyway, uh, for about a month or so, I was dealing with the most intense, terrible pain on my left side from my like neck all the way down to my fingers. And uh, yeah, it was the most intense thing that I've ever experienced. And it was so disheartening because I had just had this pretty <laughs> insane but successful surgery. And all I could think was I messed it up. I did something and now I'm screwed up. The things that I'm so scared about, I ended up causing because I pushed myself too much. I should have listened to the doctor. But anyway, I saw the doctor and he looked at the MRI because I had to get a new MRI. And uh, yeah, I saw that C8 to T1 is kind of ruptured. I had like a nerve test done and everything and it does show that the nerve is being pinched. So what I'm currently experiencing, luckily with like the meds that I'm on and I guess just with time, I don't have as much intense pain on my left side. However, my half of my hand um, and these two fingers are like numb. This one's, my pinky is like the worst. So the side of my hand, my pinky is like numb, tingly. Sometimes it's like pins and needles, but overall it's just kind of like dead to some extent, but it just, it's so weird. Um, it just feels like it's dead. Like I know it's there and I can tell there's pressure or something on it, but other than that, can't feel it. This one's a little bit better, but um, still half dead. Um, and then these fingers are fine. So what am I noticing? So anyway, an update is I saw the surgeon again to see like how I've been doing. And he said, he really recommends that I get what's called a laminectomy. That's where they go through the back of the neck and I guess they cut through the muscle and yeah, I'm not making eye contact. Anyway, they go through the back of the neck and cut through the muscle and they get rid of the bones in the neck to free up some space. Um, because it, I guess with congenital stenosis, um, you're kind of born with like a small canal anyway. So if they remove the bone in the neck Supposedly, it frees up some space so that the nerve or the, the cord, I don't know, isn't as um, congested. So, I don't know. He said that that probably would help with any future issues. It would help both sides because I also have some num numbness on my other hand. But uh, I'm not there yet. I'm not ready to have that, that surgery. Um, so, he said the other thing that he could do is a fromenectomy or... I forget the name of it, but basically he would go in through the back of the neck, cut through the muscle and I guess open up space around, I guess the nerve. And he said that that should, <laughs> that should um, free up the nerve so that maybe I can get some feeling back in my hand and hopefully won't be painful. But again, it's a should and it's still a pretty major surgery. I'm kind of like, well then if we're gonna do a major surgery, we're going through the back of the neck, we might as well just do the whole thing, so. I don't know. For now, he said, I'm not really in danger per se. Um, that if I can tolerate not using that part of my hand and whatever, just, just tolerate it, I guess, until I can't. <sighs> so, um, so that's where I'm at. So I'm at the point where I obviously I want to get other opinions and I have a couple doctors that I'm going to probably reach out to, but I don't know. It just sucks. It sucks that I'm not even a year out and another thing happened. And I don't know if it was just going to happen, regardless of me lifting up a box. I just sped it up maybe, or, uh, I don't know. So where am I at? At first it sucked. I was super depressed and anxious. I'm a therapist. I think I'm a really awesome therapist. 
Um, but obviously when it's yourself, um, it's different. Um, and you're in your head a lot and I have medical anxiety to begin with. So it just sucks. And it's so easy to get depressed and to feel kind of like just frustrated, especially because, dude, I don't know. I think I'm just like emotional. Um, I was like a swimmer. Um, I worked out at the gym. I did martial arts, you know, like I was an active person, skydiving, shooting, like that's me. Um, the doctor said that, you know, I can kind of try to go back to normal activities. Obviously, I don't think I can like fight and do stuff like that. But he says I can probably go back to the shooting range. And uh, <laughs> he's like, if something else breaks, we'll just fix it. And I'm kind of like, dude, that kind of sucks because like the one thing broke and that was like so painful. And I had a pulmonary embolism back in 2006 and that was painful. But uh, I don't want that. I don't want it to be where I'm always waiting for the next thing. Um, so, uh, right now I'm just going to tolerate it right now. I'm just going to tolerate not being able to use my hand. Um, I did buy a NordaTrack indoor bike. It's like a cycling bike. I don't know. I've never done it before. It hurts my ass. I bought like, <laughs> I bought padded shorts and what have you. So I figured I haven't been active for like two years. So this might be something that will help me lose some weight and get my cardio back. Cause obviously like just sitting here talking, I'm like, ah, fuck. <laughs> um, but, um, I, I think the main thing is perspective. It sucks that this happened during COVID because feeling alone and isolative really sucks. Um, I'm even reading a book called Together by Vivica M Murphy. He was the 19th Surgeon General, I believe, of the U.S. and talks about loneliness as like a real disease. Um, so I think in terms of being a therapist, I'm just trying to use my own skills that I teach my clients where perspective, mindset, I'm still lucky to be here. I'm still lucky to be able to like even use my hand at all. Um, but truth be told, do I regret the surgery? No, I don't regret it because I couldn't even like sit and support my head on my neck. Now, I mean, not so well, but now I can like lay on my stomach for a little bit. I can turn my head to both sides. I have more movement than usual. Obviously, like the more active I am, the more this feels uncomfortable. And it's odd that I'm making this video today because you all were asking for updates, but um, it's just feeling more weird. I don't know how to like describe that, but I'm sure you guys, if you're on here, like you know like what I'm talking about. It's like things just feel weird. <laughs> um, the other odd thing that is really upsetting me is every night now when I go to sleep, my feet, both my feet are like numb, like from my knees. It's weird. It's like in my knees, down on my feet, they like go numb. And then also both sides of my arms, like my hands are going numb depending on like which way I'm laying, but it's scary. It's like, I keep waking up with numb extremities and, uh, I don't know. I had the nerve test done and the right hand, it shows, um, possible carpal tunnel, but it didn't show that I had things with like the spine, but then why, if I lay a certain way, does my, my right side go numb? I don't know. So anyway, it's fun. It's fun waking up multiple times during the night because of pain, um, in the neck or because like I freak out because both of my, my legs go numb or I don't know. It just sucks. So like, again, it's eight months out. If you're planning to have the surgery, I do recommend you get some referrals. Um, I think I might have to get something in my lower back done because obviously my cervical spine, I don't think affects my feet. Although somebody, I totally forget your name. I'm sorry. You just wrote a comment today or yesterday saying that you're kind of having the same symptoms I'm having where like your feet are going numb, but you said something about you're actually paralyzed. I feel so bad for you. Um, I don't wish this on anybody. Like, I know that when we talk about spine surgery, it seems so extreme um, because it is, you know? And there's all the worry that if, like, you nick your spinal cord or what have you, especially this high up, you risk, like, so many, I don't know, complications, I guess. And the saying of, like, once you go in and affect your spine, it's just downhill from there. And when you're this young, or at any age, I guess, like the idea of having multiple surgeries and I don't know, it's scary. But what I'm trying to just say is that's the reality of what I have. I can't, I can't positively think my spine to be bigger. Um, but I can 
positively think myself into the mindset of it's healing, um, I'm okay, I'm alive, and I just have to adjust. Uh, and I think that's the thing I was fighting for so long was, you know, I don't want to have to adjust. I don't want to have to worry about my neck. I don't want to, I don't know, not sleep. Like I, I put concealer on before doing this video because I saw myself and I was just like, there's no way I can do this. Um, but my sleep has just been terrible. And I don't know if you can see, like, it's just sunken in and I am tired. I'm tired because I, um, I do telehealth with my clients and luckily a lot of them are via phone but the ones that are zoom I have to like sit up straight and like look straight and I don't know if it's like posture or what but like sitting up straight and looking straight like it hurts my neck um so it's like always a reminder of like ugh, man like I got used to the scar I don't really care about that but it's more like oh my god <laughs> the other thing is like rain and like barometric pressure like I used to always hear people be like oh it's gonna rain like on my my joints are hurting and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you sound old, stop being dramatic. And now like in the mornings before I even op open up my eyes, I'm like, oh, like, oh God, it's going to be a pain day. <laughs> and it's just like, oh my God, I'm becoming one of those people, but it's okay. I guess we can join a club, I guess. <laughs> um, you have to laugh sometimes, honestly, guys and girls and everyone, um, you got to laugh sometimes through the pain. Dude, marijuana helps. I have not smoked since that time I had mentioned about using it to help with the pain. And it was a godsend. It, it seriously gave me some relief. But uh, I haven't smoked because, I don't know, for me, it's like a whole thing. It's like a paranoia. I don't know. So I just don't smoke. Um, but I totally recommend it for people that are cool with it. Um, so yeah, if this is like your first time viewing my videos, <laughs> you're going to see the progression of weight gain. <laughs> Um, hopefully whiter teeth though, guys. I've been whitening my teeth to the point where they hurt, but I gotta do something. Um, and also, ladies, Latisse, the eye drop thingies, definitely works. My eyelashes are on fleek, although I think that also, like, creates some, like, dark eyelids or whatever, but it's worth it for the lashes, right? <laughs> um, yeah, guys, so updates. Um, trying to get a positive attitude, trying to just adapt to my hand, not really, not really working it's there i'm actually curious like this summer like i want to put a glove on and see if i told the ball like like can i actually catch and does it like can I actually close and hold a ball um that'll be like the biggest thing oh <laughs> god forbid i'm gonna like catch like try to catch like a football or like a baseball and like it snacks me in the face so i think i'm gonna start like with underhand first so um that's my goal like i want to start becoming a little bit more active like i used to be without being scared i'm gonna do something because like the doctor says if something else breaks we'll just go in and fix it but i don't want to live my life like it's um like one step away from a crisis um because that's what it feels like um so i don't know if like you guys are experiencing this where it's just like what next and how long is this gonna last because guys eight months like fuck like coronavirus <laughs> like i don't know it's so weird it's like time has just been so weird um and just one day blends into the other so advice get a nice bed i actually got a bed that like tilts up and stuff so that's been kind of helpful um and I, I don't know, I think the biggest thing is like positive mindset and don't withdraw. Like I, fuck man, I'm gonna cry. Like I withdraw from like friends and family when I'm like in pain or when I'm hurting. And this t really taught me a lesson of like, people like me, um, people wanna be around me, people wanna help. So like asking for help and accepting it, um, not being so stubborn. Um, we curate relationships, not because we need people, but we, because we, we like them, we want them, we love them. And if you're lucky enough to have friends and family, like, really let them in. Because it can be a really scary, dark place. And when you're in pain, we become irritable, we become depressed. Um, and we just push people away because we're angry, you know, because... Anger sometimes is better than being sad all the time. But sometimes we have to recognize that we, when we're angry and we're pushing people away and we stop responding to text messages or we don't reach out, like 
your your circle gets so small and it's it can be a really dangerous place to be in um so it's just weird i don't know where i'm going with this but you guys were asking for a video and I'm, it's already at 20 minutes man um yeah, you guys wanted an update, and that's really where it is. Like, I, I think the last video, I didn't really have anything new except for, like, the whole hand thing. And now he's just saying a fromenectomy. Again, I don't know what the hell it's called. I, I had it written down somewhere, but I'm trying not to make every day and every moment of every day something with my neck. Um, it kind of sucks because I have to take pills, like, three times a day and stuff, but I'm hoping to eventually maybe get off of that. I'm just like moving you guys around because I can't <laughs> when I like hold my hand up or like if I'm using it too much it's just like it activates the numbness oh, it's so fucking weird it's like you would think if it's numb I can't feel it at all but it's like it doesn't hurt it does hurt but it's like god I don't know how to like I would love to hear from you guys like what is it that you experience if you have levels like C what the hell do I have now I used to talk about it so much C three to c7 or c4 c4 to c7 right <laughs> i don't know um like what are you experiencing and for those of you that have had the surgery and have had bad results or you've had the surgery and you're having other symptoms now i feel you for those of you looking for the surgery and maybe using my videos as like a oh my god should i or shouldn't i that's something that you have to decide all of these videos and research that you make or that you look up I gotta stop crying man <laughs> um you're just gonna get in your head um you know how you feel you know if you can carry forward like this um if you are at the place where your doctor is recommending this surgery um it probably means that you've not been well it's either a brand new thing that you experienced and it's probably really freaking scary. Um, and you're probably like thinking like, oh my God, like I have too many options. Like how long can I last like this? Um, do I have to like take care of it now? Am I going to be paralyzed from the neck down? And don't get me wrong. Like I know that there's plenty of people that are um, not able-bodied and they function well because that's their norm. But if you're someone who hasn't gotten used to that, um, it's a real mind fuck. It's like, how am I going to be able to live if something happens? Um, I know for me, my neck was really, really bad. And it got to the point where if I got into another car accident, uh, cause I get rear ended a lot. I don't know what that is. It's just Philly drivers, man. Um, but you know, like another kind of like whiplash kind of thing. Like I possibly ran the risk of being paralyzed from the neck down. So <laughs> The pain that I was going through and that fear of like every time I get in the car, like I was just like, I can't keep living like this. Um, and I have a girlfriend who has had so many back surgeries and she had such shitty luck. And finally this year she had some success and she's living again. And I think that's what my goal is. I want to start living again. I don't want to just keep existing. I don't want to keep existing through pain and I don't want to just... I don't know. I want to do more than survive. I want to thrive again. I want to be happy where I have a whole day of being active and not hurting for the next week and a half because I was active. So I will get there as will you. And I don't know, whoever's watching this and those of you that are, have subscribed and, you know, um, sending well wishes and all like you guys are awesome. And I just wish the best for you guys. And if you're here watching my videos, I do want to be a source of support. And I had some fluky thing happen. And it's likely to occur if you are going to have this surgery. Um, but just do some research. Get a couple opinions. And the surgery, honestly, like my experience, wasn't bad. Um, like I said, I'm a super independent person. And I didn't have too much pain I had some muscular pain and adapting to wearing the collar and everything but again I document it I think every month or every week in the beginning and you guys saw where I was at I was completely honest I wasn't sugarcoating anything um I think the biggest thing was like I said the mental piece of it and the the mental fortitude that I had to develop into and I have some really shitty days guys like don't get me wrong going through this during COVID and 
being single. Ah, still single. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank God. Like, I don't know, like my work and my clients, like having to be on for my clients helps. And I'm lucky to have that opportunity. And I was able to still work and use my voice. I had like no swallowing issues. I didn't have um, anything like that. So I was able to, to talk normally. And uh, I don't know, my clients are just awesome. You know, like, uh, I know sometimes hearing other people's woes kind of distracts you and, and helping people is, a, is always a good thing, which is why I'm trying to do this video for you guys. Um, but I think I'm going to end it because I'm at like 25 minutes. Um, feel free to send me my, like more questions or if you have any like really specific things with regards to like, what did I do or what helped me? Dude, the other thing that sucked that um, somebody made a comment and I was like, what? When they were talking about eating ice cream, they're like, when you eat cold stuff, like it hurts. And I was like, what are you talking about? It does. And it's so weird because I keep thinking and I was like, oh, they went through here. So in my brain, I'm thinking this part is supposed to be like the thing that gets affected. But it's it's weird. It's back here. Obviously, it's your spine. Like, duh. Again, I told you guys, I'm really smart, but I'm dumb sometimes. <laughs> um but like in the winter time, like going outside on like those bitter days, like it's so weird. It's like cold days and rainy days now. Like, oh my God, I'm going to be one of those like people that moved to Florida. Oh my God. But like the cold, seriously, like I felt like I was like, I could feel the metal. Like I could feel like it sounds freakier than it is. And I'm, I'm thinking that I'm probably like probably scaring you away. But anyway, um, just some weird stuff. But overall, I do recommend the surgery if you were at where I was at. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's really all that I have. Send me some questions. Um, keep the positive comments coming. I love reading them. If you've had the surgery and you're struggling, um, I guess use this platform to kind of get some support. Um, I don't check it often, but I do get notifications. It's weird though. Sometimes you guys are leaving comments and I go to um, reply back and it's like, I can't like I don't know if you deleted the comment or what um but thank you for sending some messages and for the person who actually like told me like the fromenectomy I'm saying it so wrong probably but um a couple of you guys had told me like different things to bring up to my doctor in terms of like options to the laminectomy so thank you for that um I did bring it to his attention which is why he said the thing <laughs> the fromenectomy or whatever um he said that that was an option but um it would only possibly solve like possibly help with my left side um like I said I'm kind of freaking out because I'm using this damn studio bike and it's not fun but it's something and those people are super motivating on there um but I am so out of shape compared to where I used to be it's so sad as I'm like looking at my look here can I flip this how do I flip this um nope I don't know how to flip this anyway I'll flip it that way I don't know if you can see it um it's like my first degree black belt anyway I'm very proud of that one. My second degree. I don't know. I don't know if I deserved it. Um, what the hell was I saying? I don't know. Damn it. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm going to end it here. Be good. Be well. Be smart. And uh, I don't know. Keep in touch. Mwah. Bye.